What up, Smart Rapper Gang? A question I get asked a lot and a question that I wondered the answer to for a while. I was like, what's that even mean when they say that? And why does it seem so powerful when it's spoken of? And today we're talking about what does it mean to own the master of your song? Like, why is it such a big deal when an artist goes, yeah, and I own my masters, bitch? You're gonna see why it actually matters here. Because we're talking about a lot of money, especially if you're an artist that becomes worth a lot of money, you make so much more. So it's very powerful, something that you wanna leverage. We're gonna talk about that and how you can like, leverage it with the labels and stuff like that. I'm Rob Level. This is Smart Rapper, the number one source for upcoming rappers in the world. Please hit subscribe for me and hit the little bell when you do so you're notified every time I release a new video, which is every single day now. The videos get released according to the top. You got marketing videos, mixing videos, home studio videos, uh, dissection videos, uh, inspiration, motivation videos every single day. Please hit subscribe. At least check out the content, all right? If you don't like it, unsubscribe later. But for now, I'm giving you the gold, all right? I got your back on here. I'm gonna talk about these masters, and you're gonna get smarter right after the intro. If the only thing I know is you ain't built like this, hit so I make the brain say quit. I ain't no fraud, no gangsta or goon. I just wanna accept this speck or lose. Now follow me to greatness, show you what it take. Show you how to use curse, show you how to hate it. Hungry for more like a Lloyd Banks playlist. Still don't like the only person not up in the matrix. Speaking of masters, I own the masters to my songs, and that song that just played in the intro is my new song, Built Like This, and I'll put a link below in the description, you guys can check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, stuff like that. First off, let's start by explaining what a master is. Because it can be a bit confusing when you have to start breaking down a songwriter's share, composers, publishers, publishing, everything else like that. It can kind of get confusing because there's a lot of terminology that goes along with a lot of business when it comes to publishing and getting your shares and everything else like that. It can really be confusing, especially when you first start. So I'm gonna break this down for you. A master recording is pretty much the finished, beautifully polished, mixed, mastered, done version of your song, the master, the best version of your song that you actually put out into the world that gets pushed, marketed, and distributed. That's a master. The one you put on Spotify, Apple Music, that is the master, okay? Now a little bit of history on the term master. Originally, and the reason that they're still called masters today is because when a band or a group or a singer would create a song onto a record or onto a, on a vinyl or whatever, or even onto a cassette or whatever it was put onto, that version of it was the master version that all of the other replicates and duplicates were made from. It was the master, the main version, and the rest of them were all distributed. The thousands and tens of thousands of other records and tapes and CDs that are made, they are all made from this original master finished version. And that's where the term master comes from. For example, if they wanted to clone you, because you're so fucking awesome, right? You would be the master version. And every clone that was made off of you would not be the master version. The primary one, the final perfect version is the master. Now before I go on and explain a ton more about mastering, because there's more information that you need to know about this, like how you make your money from it and why artists need it and also how to leverage yourself for a record label, stuff like that. I want to talk about the history of it so you understand why it's so powerful and why in history it's mattered to an artist. And I'm talking a lot of money, so look, pay attention here. Now there's things here that can be confusing because a lot of artists don't even write their own songs, yet they do perform the song with their voice and their music style. Like for instance, Rihanna doesn't write her songs. Great songwriters write her songs and she records them as Rihanna because nobody else is going to record them as good as her. So the composer or the producer who makes the beat along with the songwriter or the person who writes the lyrics could own a lot of the song as far as the songwriting share and everything else like that and the, and the publishing. But the artist who recorded their voice and their style onto the song would own that master version of that song because it is still their song from the standpoint of that's their master recording of the song. See what I'm saying? And somebody else who made their version of the song, that would be their own master version of the song if they were to have remixed and stuff like that. But of course, you know, you don't necessarily have the ownership of the beat and the production and stuff like that or the lyrics. This is where it gets really confusing. That's why I'm just breaking down a master for you, okay? But the master is like if you record the song, you own the master of the song because you recorded your style and your version and your and you onto that song. The composer will typically own the copyright to the composition or the beat or jointly along with anybody else who helped write the song or make the beat, okay? But you, the performer, the artist, you would own the copyright for the specific recordings made of that composition. I'm saying this in as many ways as possible so that you understand you can kind of break it down. Sometimes you need to hear it in a certain way to get it. Like, I don't get it, I'm confused. 
Hopefully, I'm helping you get that, right? Now, most rappers, they don't even care about stuff like this. When you first start rapping, you're like, I don't care about masters. I don't care about all these things, right? You don't care because you're just like, I just want to make great music. I want to make it as a rapper. Like, what's the matter to own my masters if nobody knows who I am? And to be honest, I didn't care about this stuff for a long time either. So you start making money from your music. So you're going to need to know this eventually, which is what I'm trying to teach you in net. When I started writing songs for major artists, I was like, oh, I need to know this stuff, okay? Because I got some songwriting placements. I get checks for writing songs for other artists. Because I've done a bunch of songwriting sessions with people who have written platinum records. And when I'm in a, a room with these people, they know that their shit. They've made millions of dollars writing songs for artists. So I need to make sure that I understand the business side so when I'm getting my money, I'm actually getting my money. Like the first time, really quick story that wasn't even, I didn't even initially plan on telling. I wrote a song for somebody onto a beat and gave a producer a beat and the pre producer just simply remade the beat and slightly made it better and he still got his cut even though I made, I chose the beat for the song. I made the entire song, I wrote the hook, I wrote the verses, did the whole thing and then I gave the producer the beat. The producer then got credit for the beat even though I didn't make the beat but I chose the beat. So all he had, to, he had a blueprint. That's all he had to do, right? So he had to get a percentage. And then the, the person who was the manager of the artist, which she has like six million followers now, and she's like doing a fucking thing. Her manager required to have a third of the of the publishing and the and the songwriting on the song, even though he didn't do anything. That was just to place the song with her, which blows my mind. But that's how it works if you don't have the clout yet to do that. Because like now I'd be like, nah, I, just, I, I could call three other people to buy the song. You have to know your stuff, but that's gonna happen. There's a lot, there's a lot of factors. But I just want to tell you that too. You gotta, it's how it works sometimes. And you gotta learn your stuff if you like me, because I hate being walked on. I'm not letting anybody walk all over me. I'm gonna be honest with you. You can go your whole career not even knowing what a master is. But if you're a serious artist, as I know you are, or you're going to become because you're serious right now, you need to know this stuff. All right. So I'm teaching you. Make you smarter. Now let's go into some business information that you can use to protect yourself and become a smarter rapper. See now in, in traditional recordings or in recording contracts with labels, the artist you would sign away their rights to the masters as soon as they sign the label deal. Masters meaning the rights to their songs, okay? Just reiterate. And you, the artist, the rapper, would then give the label a set period of time in which they had the use of and ownership of the copyright of your finalized master recording to monetize it. Now in return for that, you giving them that, the label would give you, the artist, an advance or money that is recoupable and gets paid back by the royalties that your song generates. So the money that it makes goes back to paying the advance. An advance from a label is basically just an overpriced loan. Now to go over it again really quick, because I need you to know what this means, especially if you ever are gonna deal with, with a label or, or if you need to know and you hear this word, but recoupable means the label is going to recoup or get back their money or anything that they give you. So if they give you an advance for $100,000 and it's a recoupable advance, you have to pay them back. But if they give you a $100,000 advance to sign, but it's non-recoupable, that's your money. You get to keep that. It's non-recoupable. They don't recoup or get it back. That's what recoup means. And like I said before, it's like a bank loan. So what you're doing is when you sign with a label, you're giving them the ability to monetize your music and generally if it's a 360 deal, you as an artist, until you recoup enough money to pay them back. And then even after that, it's only a percentage of the amount that you would get. And that's why I say it's an overpriced bank loan. Because a bank would generally give you a loan for a set amount of percentage, right? So they're like, oh, I'll give this to you. You're gonna get it for 6%. So you gotta give them 6% back on top of a loan. So if it's $100, loan you to get them hundred and six dollars back but what a label does is a label will give you the loan you pay back the loan and then after the loan is paid back you guys start splitting the money generally you only get 50 percent so your bank loan is really like a 50 percent bank loan now real quick the reason i'm saying this generally when you sign a label deal they will own your master recordings okay they'll own them because unless you say differently inside of the contract. That's why it's such a big deal when you hear that an artist says that they own their masters. Because if an artist says that they own their masters, this means that when they went to the label, they had enough leverage to be like, hey, nah, I wanna own my masters. Or they have a smaller set amount of time in which the label owns the masters and then after that it comes back to the artist. So if they could even negotiate that, that means that the artist was probably really buzzing at that time, which is a fantastic thing. Hopefully you're that artist that is able to negotiate that deal. Never hurts to ask. And more importantly, when an artist says that they own their masters, it means that they were smart enough to even request owning the masters. Because most artists just be like, I don't care, I'll just sign. But if you're smart enough to know the power of owning your masters, which is what this video is for, then you'll ask to own your masters. And that means that smart that artist was probably pretty smart. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go deeper into this and talk about hundreds of millions of dollars and why owning your masters matters. First, let's talk about your capabilities and being able to actually buy back your masters yes you can do this and if you own your masters already you can actually sell your masters that you own to somebody else so they have ownership of your masters and yeah this happens all the time so that's why it's good to actually have your masters because not you don't just own them you can also sell them to somebody so michael jackson purchased atv's 4,000 song catalog for 47.5 million dollars in 1985 and when he bought that catalog he actually owned a 
couple songs from uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, okay, which are the two primary songwriters from the Beatles. And by owning some of these songs, that's super powerful. And that deal, he also got masters of songs from Bruce Springsteen, the Rolling Stones, and even Elvis and more. Like he bought the catalog, he owned the masters to like superstars, okay? He owned through a lot of songs, 4,000 songs, all those masters. And then he was able to monetize because he owned the masters. He could then start monetizing. He paid 47.5 million knowing that he would make his money back because there were so many songs that were great in that catalog. He was able to monetize owning those masters. You see why it's powerful to have and own the masters? He spent $47.5 million in 1985. That's more like $100 million now. I broke it down with an inflation calculator. $47 million in 1985 is $222 million today. That's how much he paid because he knew he gets money back. That's a quarter, almost a quarter, it's a fifth of a billion dollars. God damn, bro, for a 4,000 song catalog, it gets better. Even crazier, in 2016, Sony said, look, we want to buy Michael Jackson's estate, and that included 50% of pretty much the songs that uh, Sony ATV had actually had. So they're trying to buy their masters back. So they bought 50% ownership of those masters. Only 50, only half of those masters. They paid, you'll never guess, $750 million for only half. That means it's worth $1.5 billion. They paid that much money for to own 50% of the cat. Now that made Sony the sole owner of the John Lennon and Paul McCartney songs. They know how much money that's worth. Like the Beatles song music is never really going to get old because of how massive the Beatles were and what they meant to pop culture and we're not going to get into that. But that's really powerful. That's why they paid almost a billion dollars for it, okay? Also realize they would only spend $750 million on that catalog if they knew they were gonna get their $750 million back and more, okay? They would only do that for that. It's also a power move because for them to be like, ah, oh, yeah, Sony owns these. You know what I'm saying? And eventually they'll make their money back and all that. And they know that as well as they gain more power. All the other labels can't say, oh, we own the Beatles catalog. We own this, we own this. No, but Sony can. Gee, that's dope. That's crazy. Sony, that's power move, dog. So after talking about this and explaining the master stuff to you, you need to understand the power of owning your masters. And if you give them away, you lose control. Now, generally, a label will offer you the ability to buy your masters back at a certain cost after they have recouped their initial advance, okay? But unless you're a superstar, you generally never reach the point in which you actually recoup all of your money and then a label and you're even getting paid. A lot of artists, that never happens. And I'm not gonna go super deep into that, but that's, you know what I'm saying? I'm just pointing that out. So it's better to just own it instead of having to worry about it, right? Because what a label generally does is, a label deal is structured to keep an artist in debt so that the label consistently has power over the artist and can make them keep producing music and keep monetizing them where they stay in a hole. And it's only came really more to light since we had the internet and everybody's actually talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Like a label deal is generally not, it's not made for you, it's made for the label and their business. They wanna make money. And I love to break all that down for you real quick, but that took me a bit of time. So what I'm gonna do Instead, I'm going to show you a little breakdown from a documentary that 30 Seconds to Mars made about how they were getting screwed by their label. And this is actually really cool how it shows you like the structure of how a label sets things up from album to album so the artist consistently goes into debt. And I'm going to dub that in for you real quick. A typical record deal is structured something like this. The record label gives in advance, say, $250,000 to the artist to record an album. The artist then records the album. Suppose that the album sells 500,000 copies at $10 each, yielding $5 million. The record label then takes their cut out of the $5 million, typically 85% of the total sales, leaving the artist with $750,000. But before the artist receives any payments, the label first deducts the advance. In addition, the record label recoups other costs such as recording costs, half the promotion costs, half the video costs, and tour support. This leaves the artist $425,000 in debt to the record label. And then this debt gets carried on to the next album, the next album, and the next album. That's crazy, right? But in the case that you become a superstar music artist and make tons of money for the label, and you pay back your advance, well then you can buy your masters back if you didn't already own them. Now you should know that you need to own the masters to your songs for obvious reasons. And if you ever go to get a label deal, make sure that you try to negotiate to own your masters. Because you can see how important it is in the long run. You don't want to have to spend money to buy your masters back later when you're a superstar, because they're going to charge you way more. They're like, nah, we'll give it to you for this much, right? Because they're not going to want to sell it to you. It's worth money. Unless it's in your contract that it's already set at a certain period of time, or that it's set at a certain price, which you can 
also put into a contract, which is interesting. All right, I'm Rob Level. You just got a little bit smart. I hope this helps you out, all right? So you know about masters, you know how you can sell masters, you know why you need your masters, you know what a master is, and I hope this video really helps you out, all right? So please subscribe and hit that little bell when you do, because you're gonna get notified every time I release a new video, which is every single solitary day. So keep coming back to Smart Rapper and see all these videos. There's tons more coming. I appreciate y'all. Please hit me with subscribe. Click subscribe and hit that like button and hit me with a comment as well. Appreciate y'all. Keep hustling, gang. I'll see you at the top. Get those masters. Smart Rapper! Gang!